Tata EV has just launched the Harrier EV in India starting at 21.49 lakh rupees ex showroom that's the introductory pricing and to know more about this capable off-roader I will be joined by Vivek Srivatsa the chief commercial officer of Tata Passenger Electric Mobility Mr. Srivatsa thank you so much for joining us on My CNBC pleasure. TV18 as well as on Overdrive yeah. great pricing uh, of course we are waiting for the entire range yeah. of pricing yeah. But uh, tell me something, the Active Plus platform that this car is based on, why has Tata chosen to go through this route uh, considering that the competitors have gone through and you know a completely electric based platform? I mean Active Plus itself is a pure EV platform. Yeah. It's just that we have gone with the traditional top hat on it, you know. Yeah. Um, it is, I mean you've seen the, it's a flat floor and the kind of tech that it releases, it is a uh, pure EV architecture. Hmm. Uh, it's, a, it's an extension of the architecture that we had used for punch curve right. and now it comes into Harrier but, as, but in a much superior way that's why we call it Active Plus. Uh, the design was a in, uh, you know uh, it, it's an intentional uh, decision that we took that we'll go with an established design language right. and because see when consumers adopt EVs there's so many changes they go through you know hmm. I mean not only the way they drive but you know the charging habits and you know there's a lot of tech overload and a change management that happens mm. we thought let's at least keep the design a little stable mm. so that uh, they are comfortable um, with what they are buying the harrier design has been repeatedly appreciated we didn't find a reason for to move depart from this mm. uh, of course in the future you know on the same architecture we would be able to create multiple body styles and design so that's something which will come probably in the future. But yeah. I think what we are seeing with a lot of comments and consumers basically talking about is that they are waiting for an all electric platform. Uh -huh. And I think that's what people are wondering that why didn't you choose so Active, to do that? Active Plus is an all electric no, as in platform. Like, like Harrier yeah. still we've got the ICE model first so, and then the EV. Yeah. yeah, the model is ICE. It's only yeah. the top hat which is common. Yeah. So the Harrier ICE hmm. is on a different architecture or a platform, yeah. this is a, on a different architecture. Yeah. So this is a pure EV architecture, okay. you know. You will have to clarify to people who ask you that. Okay. Because the underpinning is completely different. Right. The Harrier Eyes does not come with a flat floor. Harrier Eyes True. does not come with all-wheel drive, yeah. you know. Uh, it does not come with many of the, uh, you know, the uh, software-defined vehicle features, you know, mm. the Tidal that we said. Mm. So that is all enabled by the EV architecture. Yeah. Actually, that's a very interesting point that you've made. The all-wheel drive, that is not something that we've seen in the ICE model, yes. right? Do yeah. you see a lot of takers for this in the electric guys right now? I think relatively on the electric, we will see more AWD takers than on ICE, hmm. is what we believe in. Uh, because it not only releases on one side the capability to go off-road and, you know, hmm. into challenging terrains, but it also allows greater safety, greater performance on normal roads as well, mm. you know. So I think consumers get much more value in an electric all-wheel drive, yeah. uh, QWD, compared to a traditional all-wheel drive on ice. Would it be fair to compare this to, say, the SUVs, the ICE models which are on road? Do you think that this will be competing with the yes, traditional you know, ICE models as well? It will be competing, but I mean, I would say this is the most capable SUV possible because on one side you have tremendous power and performance. Hmm. On the other side, you have, you know, ability to manage, you know, the suspension is so good, the kind of comfort and performance that it unleashes is not like any other ICE SUV. Hmm. Plus, of course, the economy of running an EV, you know. So, uh, whether it is tech, whether it is performance, whether it is off-road ability, this is in a different league. Yes, it competes because pricing sits there. Yeah. But I think it's a completely different animal. So, yeah. who are you targeting exactly? Are you targeting existing Tata owners or are you looking for people who have not really experienced the Tata brand yet? I think definitely expanding our portfolio. Hmm. I mean, definitely our own... Uh, customers are welcome to upgrade mm. but we definitely see, uh, want to get people from outside as well we are looking at anybody who's you know who's currently having a compact SUV or a mid sedan or a mid or high hatch mm. uh, somebody who's earned, has uh, I mean changed this car at least once mm. earlier uh, and they're looking at upgrading even further it's an ideal car you know and uh, I think it gives them the all-round ability that they seek um, so yes um, if you look at only the high SUV category, hmm. 
that category sells about 25000 units per month hmm. so we would like to get a good share out of that yeah do you yeah. think that this will be competing with the ice hario as well yes i or think you're that, expecting it to outsell i uh, mean uh, i won't be uh, we'll have to see how it goes yeah but uh, yes it it would there will be an overlap you know if you are competing with the mid high suv category hmm. harrier also sits there but hmm. having said that i think they like we discussed earlier the ev will bring in a much bigger catchment area of consumers hmm. probably consumers who are not looking at tata so far will look at this hmm. because of the kind of package it offers in terms of performance and you know uh, capability so yes there will be a little bit of overlap but that is the name of the game you know how do you attract different consumers hmm. yeah recent industry reports suggest that there could be a worry in terms of you know the rare uh, earth materials or scarcity yeah. of it will that impact the timelines in terms of you know production and deliveries it is of concern mm. uh, right now we are not seeing right now as of today we are not uh, seeing too much of impact but it definitely is a little bit of a uh, concern for future months mm. if it does not get sorted out mm. um, but we are confident between the industry bodies and the government this thing will get smoothened out very soon so you don't think that it would impact the delivery timelines or anything we are not seeing it right now but um, if it doesn't get sorted out soon it might be an issue yeah yeah okay yeah and uh, of course i have to ask you about the future of you know tata ev the products that we might see the suvs is is this the all wheel drive variant in electric suv is going to be something that we're going to see in the future as well with the sierra ev and it's very much possible you know mm -hmm. uh, i think carrying forward qwd to other electric vehicles is very much possible especially mm -hmm. if they share the active plus platform mm -hmm. uh, it is very much possible and um, if consumer response is good uh, we will definitely look at that yeah. so when can we expect that what's the timeline for that sierra will definitely come in in this calendar year mm -hmm. um, later part of the calendar year okay yeah Okay. Uh, and it will come both in ice and navy form and what about the avenia i have to ask you about that as well avenia is a little bit more down the line i okay. would say yeah so not not, not this calendar, calendar year okay no, no. all right thank okay. you so much for your time My and pleasure. we're waiting for the entire price yes very soon probably by end of the month you'll get it all right thank you so much thank you Bye.